Hi everybody and welcome to our mid-winter fishing report. Of course, the shortest day is upon us and that means we're going to have uh, a long night. So if you want to do some night fishing, great time of year to do it. Just make sure you've got yourself um, a good hot thermos and lots and lots of down clothing in order to stay nice and warm because it can be pretty chilly out there. But the rewards are great if you do get out there. Now, of course, I've got a lot of happy people around because last week we had the Great Canal Breakout. Now, the great thing about these sorts of events is that it allows everybody, all walks of life, people who've never caught fish before, to catch those fish. And I can remember back in the day, and we're talking in the 2012s, 13s and 14s, where it first sort of burst onto the scene. <laughs> there, was a there. there was a heap of uh, fishing for all sorts of people to go down there. So I know even my wife, got involved in uh, fishing down there, quite excited by what it could do. And of course, uh, easy fish make for great fishing. So I love to see all the kids and uh, all the other people who don't normally catch fish, getting fish with you know, big smiles on their faces, everybody helping everybody else out in those situations. You know, it's a great time for us to celebrate the sport and what better place to do it than in the canals. And those canals are really ideally suited for this sort of event. So um, if you do hear of any other uh, breakouts like that, make sure you let me know so I I can tell everyone because we want to share this don't we well anyway those who were down there uh, enjoying themselves in OHC and believe me it will still keep going because uh, there was a lot of fish broken out thousands and thousands but just get a bit wiser so you might need to be a bit more clever in the way that you use your soft baits or or just even using ordinary spinners you do quite well with those uh, be persistent they're not going to come as easy as they did say last Friday when it was all on so get yourself down there um, enjoy yourself over the next time just because those salmon are there. But if you go to the other canals, they've had a bit of a rest, and that's a good thing, because there's a bit of pressure that comes on there. I'm, I'm concerned that we don't over-harvest this fishery. So I hope that the managers of that area, which is Central South Island Fish and Game, uh, pay particular attention to the amount of people going down there. Good to see the rangers out, and let's hope that they continue to police it so people don't uh, necessarily uh, get greedy and exploit this uh, wonderful, wonderful resource, this wonderful place in all the world. You know, where else can you go where you see fish between 10 and 20 pound on a very regular basis and uh, you've got the chance of catching one way in excess of 20 pound? Uh, it's an amazing fishery. Please, let's look all, all look after it. So be careful when you do handle fish and you're going to put them back. Just you know, get your picture and get them back into the water nice and quickly. We like to see you know, a good etiquette is what you're doing. But if you want to go to the other canals that haven't been quite so heavily fished, uh, they're fishing okay, particularly the Tekapo Canal. And uh, if you put your, your nice big eggs out there, because it's still slightly murky, you should do okay. We're going to go down next week and have a bit of a look around just to make sure that it's going to be all right for our following week, where we've got our last um, fishing school down there. And I know there's a whole pile of people that are looking forward to that event, and hopefully we're going to get on to a few fish, but we're certainly going to teach a whole pile of the fine techniques that just separate those who get a lot of fish from those who just get a few. Anyway, so that's the canals. Let's talk about some of the other lakes around the area. And of course, as uh, we're coming into this moon phase, the moon is going to be uh, out of the way. I found that night fishing works best when we don't have too much light around. So for me, if I was going to go and fish a lake like Lake Coleridge, for example, I would go out on a night that was pretty darn, pretty dark and uh, a windy night. I like to have that breeze ruffling the surface. When it's all still and quiet and you hear people walking out into the lake, you can hear them from meters and meters away. Uh, any noise just travels so quickly and so easily and it tends to put the fish down. So when there's a bit of a ripple or natural uh, noise that's out there, it's surprising how much better you can do. And of course, night fishing is all about trying to be stealthy around the fish. Uh, I was taught way back in the day to never put my light on and so I probably kept with that and any of you who've ever been down to the canals for example and gone somewhere close to a non-lighted cage and put a light on you'll hear the fish absolutely go mad well if they do that in the cage guess what they're doing when you switch it on and they're just in the natural uh, water all around you of course they're trying to get away so just we've got to think you know the good anglers get lots of fish because they get a whole pile of things that they've sorted out and they definitely get more fish doing it that way. And you know what? You develop good night vision. You learn how not to tangle. 
which took me a wee while, I must admit, when I was in my teens, I used to go down and fish the Irwell River, which is uh, a tributary of Lake Ellesmere, and uh, spend a lot of time untangling the mess that I got into. But you know what? You only have to untangle so many messes and you get better and better. Remember, practice makes perfect, so I say go out and fish more often. So if you go to the likes of Lake Coleridge, you can fish it with a sock bait um, into the night, which is really well, or you can go back to the more traditional method where you're using luminous flies like Lumo dolls and so forth on a fly rod. And I've certainly had a lot of fun doing that. And of course, in the evenings or afternoons, um, you can do quite well. I've talked to you before about soft baiting. Just pop that soft bait out there, let it sort of hang in the current if there's an incoming stream, or just let it just move slightly over the lip quietly retrieve it, you'll be surprised what will come along and grab it. Don't overfish soft baits. So many people I know, they've got such a uh, spitting background, they want to cast out, wind in real fast. You don't do that with soft baits. Soft baits are all about being stealthy. All right? Take your time, keep everything nice and tight so you can detect the bite and you find the fish will just quietly come onto them and then away you go. Lots and lots of fun if you can master it definitely worth the time and energy of learning to master it because you're going to get good results. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Don't forget, come and see us. We're at 484 Cranford Street, or you can look at us online at www.completeangler.co.nz. Give us a call. We'd be happy to share what we know about that so you get more fish.